the next day comes. Because I was so tired from yesterday, I arrived at Haybon just barely in time. Hagasan went out as soon as he opened the shop, so I'm taking care of the shop alone. Only Bonjinkun and I are in the shop. Since hardly any customers have come, I have lots of free time. I spend the time thinking about yesterday's events. Noise and clear. A trespasser and a weird guy in a gas mask. I don't understand either of them. But when everyone went home and the noisiness vanished from the house, I actually might have felt a little lonely. It's a bit like thinking it's nice to have something lively happen once in a while. Yes, this is Junk Shop Heban. Uh. Hello? Uh. He hangs up without saying anything. What? A prank? Suicide attack. It's a suicide attack. Well, this place is lame as always. The door opens and loud voices echo through the room. You brats again? Ah, oh, it's Oba. Alba. Looking boring as usual. Sheesh, they're always, always so uncute. Oh, target found. Found? The evil brat's interest moves from me to Bonjinkun. Cleaning? Bonjinkun stops by hitting the brakes to hide behind me. Wait, wait. Doesn't that mean I'll be their new target? Wait. Wait, wait. Stay put. Uh, kids, don't hang from me. As I struggle with the noisy brats, I hear the door open again. I think it's a customer, but... Noise? Eel. What? Why did he come to the shop? Noise approaches me while curiously looking over the shop. The evil brats let go of me and keep their eyes trained on noise. Hey! Hey! Isn't it weird to have a customer? Customer? A customer came? Right. Change of target. Let's charge towards the customer. Oh wow, this is gonna be great. Uh, hey! You kids! Before I can stop them, the brats dash towards noise. Crap, he's going to get angry. What? I thought he would get angry, but instead he avoids them easily. The advancing Kyo and Now fall forward. And then Mio. Hey! Let me go! Just before she bumps into him, noise catches her and lifts her up like a kitten. Let, let me go! What are you doing? Mio pounds on Noise's chest desperately. Without budging, Noise silently continues to watch Mio. It's kind of a surreal scene. As I watch, dumbfounded, Noise does something completely unexpected. Uh. Oh. Wow. He takes Mio's struggling hand, brings his lips close to it, and kisses it. What? What the hell? But Mio's still even more surprised than me. Well, who wouldn't be? Mio trembles madly, her face red like a boiled octopus. Wha? 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 Violent girls are not cute. Noise says something absolutely absurd. Ah, ah, ah. Mio opens and closes her mouth like a goldfish, then closes her eyes and takes a deep breath. Let me go, you sexually harassed. <laughs> <sighs> Let me go, you sexual harassment piercing guy. <laughs> sexual harassment piercing guy. <laughs> noise doesn't really react and just puts Mio on the floor. Mio jumps back from Noise immediately, and after retreating a safe distance, shoves an index finger in his direction. You have so many holes in your face! What are you going to do if blood comes out? What? Blood? Blood? Kyo and Nao, who had been acting injured after falling forward, stand up when they hear their sister's words. Fortunately, the older brothers hadn't seen Noise's performance. That's a relief. What'd you do to Mio? What'd you do? Not much. Stop it, you two! Mio hurries to stop the two as they draw closer to Noise. Her face is still bright red. <clears throat> but... Let's just 
Run away! But we haven't beaten him yet. <laughs> you don't have to! <laughs> While screaming, Mio dashes out of the store. The older brothers chase after her in a hurry. The store suddenly became silent. I can hear Bon Jin Kun's gears moving faintly, but all I do is stare at noise, too surprised to speak. You... What were you doing to that young girl over there? Noise gives me a puzzled look. What? Just... Just kissing her hand and stuff. Normally that would, like, creep people out. I don't think it's that unusual. No! No, 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 no! It is that unusual. Huh? Noise just barges in, puts his hands down, and hangs over the counter. He looks into my eyes. Oh shit. <laughs> and something soft touches my lips. Uh, uh, what was that? <laughs> oh, blushies. It, it finally happened, we got our first blushies. You, you? What? D don't, don't just say what? What did you just do? Didn't I just kiss you? Huh? Noise watches me calmly as I freak out. This guy, seriously, what's wrong with him? Uh, normally, guys don't kiss other guys, you know? Unless they're into that, which I might be. Really? Wait, so you play for that team? Huh? <laughs> Noise is still completely composed, and I don't think I'm wrong about it. Even if it's between guys, if you're like that, of course kissing is a given. Yaoba, kissing is a given, if you're like that. Thank you. <laughs> no, no, <laughs> can't be it. Not possibly. <laughs> But it doesn't seem like Noise was trying to mess with me or anything. I need to get myself together. He's weird, definitely. I'm I'm not weird. I shouldn't be. And there are many guys out there that are into skinship, even if it's not between a man and a woman. Skinship? Huh. So he's that type. Probably. Or he just, you know, wants to, you know, bang you. That's a that's a distinct possibility, Oba. I wipe my lips with the back of my hand, and calm down by taking deep breaths. Anyway, why did you even come here? Noise stares at me in a fixed gaze. Well, I'd imagine he came there to see you, probably. Join my team. Huh? Where did this come from? Your team? You mean rhyme? Yeah. Um... Yeah, let's talk about it. He never planned to listen to my opinion from the start. Then, just wait. Until we come to a mutual understanding here, we're just going to talk about it. Yeah, if you join my team, as that is. <laughs> well, then we wouldn't have to talk about it. You were really strong at rhyme for when I faced you before. Let's go at it again. <laughs> no, I wasn't. You've got the wrong person. Ugh. Noise sinks into silence and just stares at me. He has a sour look on his face and winces a small bit. What's wrong with him? Well, that's not the issue here. Noise takes his gaze off of me and lets out a frustrated sigh. It's in front of your shop today. What is? Rhyme. Rhyme? Usui is going to appear around here today. Our predictions are always on target. Hmm. I frown, unable to decrypt what he's going on about. Boisterous noise travels all the way from outside. We are going. Eh? Just come. Noise steps over the counter and grabs my arm. Hey! Let me go! The shop! Do shut up. His grip on my arm is so firm that I can't shake him off, and I'm just barely able to grab my bag with Ren inside. When I go outside the shop, I see a sweltering back alley that no one ever goes through. 
A crowd of people head inside. Both Noise and I head that way as well. It's around here. When we enter the grim alleyway, Noise stands still. And before I had noticed, there was a bunny cube in his hand. Is that your Almy? Yeah. It's weird for him to have such a cute one. It'll start soon. A dim light starts to shine shortly enough. A ring of light appears in the empty space, and Uswi shows from its ankles up. The surrounding participants raise their voices in excitement, and even more people come when they hear them. Just like I said. Yeah. Go up and take a look. I said I never liked this in the first place. Even just this much. Noise slightly raises his eyebrows. And then, behind me, my bag is being pulled down on by something on it. What was pulling on the strap was... The bunny cube. When did it get there? You... <laughs> what will you do now? The audience crowds together, and I hold tightly onto my bag. There's no way to escape anymore. <laughs> Pee! At that moment, Something glides to my bag and hits the cube that's pulling down on it. The surrounding crowd is in a commotion. It's complete chaos. Howdy, Alba. The one who picks my bag up is Kojaku. So the thing that hit Noise's cube must have been Benny. The Benny Sugare members are here too. Kojaku! Shucks, Alba. How are you today? Still on delivery duty? While saying that, Kojaku shoots a leering look Noise's way. Well, it didn't take them long to get into a fight again. Why are you here? I have no reason to tell you. Rhyme, huh? I have the same question. Why are you here anyway? Brain dead rib players like yourself would die in an instant in rhyme. What did you say? Now I say, stop that. Kojaku holds back his overexcited teammate. Don't act like a little brat here. You're going too far. But he is a brat. Don't get carried away now. Whatever. Just talking to you makes me hate Rom even more. Go ahead. No one cares about Rib anymore. This somehow took a turn for the worst. And their serious attitude spills into the crowd and both Kojaku and Noise's members begin to crowd together. Rib versus Rhyme. They stand across and scowl at each other, their patience almost drained dry. Hey, you two need to... You know, your whole muscle and pride shtick has been outdated for a while now. Fighting in your head ain't nothing special, boy. It's just your way of escaping the world. And it is hard to get through the head of someone with no brain. There's no reason to continue speaking to you. Hey. And I don't want to hear that shit from some bean sprout with a big head. I am not a bean sprout. Is that so? You look enough like one to me. He's using that tone, like when he came into my room and we began to argue. Noise keeps his mouth shut and Kojaku silently stares. Aren't you rough rabbit, Mujana's Brahma team? Looks like you managed to make it all the way over here. You predict when and where Rom starts. Are you happy with the small pennies you make out of that? Is business. If you are good at something, don't do it for free. And there are a lot of people around here that want that sort of information. So if we arrange a few things. If we use our heads for different reasons than you. Noise and Kojaku glare at each other with a silent intensity. Looks like I'll just have to kick your ass in one shot then, boy. You're full of shit. But I'll let you eat those words. I shall beat you to a bloody pulp. The surrounding ribsties and rhymers let out a booming war cry. <laughs> Look at these guys flipping each other off and stuff in the background. 
Before I knew it, I was able to see the rhymers collected around Usui watch two people fighting. But more people began to turn our way. More and more. What's going to happen next? I'll make sure that you can't open that damn mouth of yours again to make any more cheeky comments. You're full of shit. Kojaku keeps firing provocations at Noise, who is just taking them with a small smirk. He tilts his head and snorts. Okay then. So this would be the point where we have to choose. Problem is, I actually kind of like both of them. <laughs> Fuck. Well, it's gotta be some dairy boy. Noise, just cut it out already, just chill. They are the ones who need to chill. Oh, they're getting fired up over there. Yeah, we'll teach these old geezers what's what. Looks like those two are already fighting. And even looks like they both don't want to miss this chance to be able to. Well then. Here I go. Kojaku and Noise clash. And both Rib and Rhyme players start fighting each other like it's a free-for-all. Since there are no rules. More people join in and it's a giant mess. The large alleyway fills with the sound of screams and roars, and the sound of fighting echoes far and wide. I have to at least stop Kojaku and Noise. I force my way through to get to them, but a guy from the side swoops down on me. Hey, you're on the rhyme side, right? Uh, whoa! He's about to hit me, and he looks like he's in it for the kill. I reflexively aim for his defenseless neck and strike it with my hand. Ooh. His knees buckle in and he falls to the ground. That was a close one. Could have been bad if I wasn't paying attention. Uriel! That was a noise. Oorah! And as soon as that came to mind... Uh, the man is swinging his arm with something sharp flying around. I soon realize that he has a knife in his hand. Seriously? That's not fucking funny! I get both of his arms in a hold and pull them downwards. As he staggers, I shove my knee into his chin. And at this point, I am reminded of the conversation with Virus and Trip, where they mentioned Alba was pretty good at committing violence. That is being displayed right now. Hmm. <laughs> he bends backwards and I kick the knife that fell from his hand. Then I connect a light kick into his face. Gil. Jeez. I start looking for Kojaku and Noise again. And they're still battling, not a bit focused on what's going on around them. <laughs> Kojaku! Noi! Oh, is this... Please let this be the inspector. You bastards! What are you doing?! The booming voice hurts my ears, and all of the fighting suddenly comes to a dead stop. Everyone turns their heads. And then... Once we saw who yelled, we all started running away as fast as we could. Akushima. The policemen all pull out their guns. What the hell is all of this noise? Rhyme? Rib? Either way, you're all getting the death penalty! Alba. Against the stampede of people running in the opposite direction, Kojaku heads my way. Where's noise? Well, he ran away, and we have to go too. Kojaku grabs my arm and we start running. Get back here now, fuckers! Akushima's loud yells could be heard even as we ran farther away out of the alley. Kojaku and I slow down and stop running once we realize that we don't hear the sound of any people after us anymore. We're both completely out of breath. We should be fine if we're this far ahead. Yeah. Just to make sure, Kojaku turns around and checks behind us. And then he gives me an apologetic look. Shucks. Sorry about this, Alba. Came to your place again, but ended up just making a racket. I lost my cool. That little shit back there. Kojaku's expression then turned serious. Alba, he's the guy who pulled you into that drive-by rhyme match, right? Uh, his exact guess startles me. He came up with it just by looking at my reactions. So you knew already. I didn't think you would have. Sorry. No, I'm not trying to put you down, Alba. 
But he's been following you in around since that drive-by, hasn't he? What happened? What? What should I say? Uh, there's no reason to hide it now. I decided to tell Kojaku the truth straight up. When he dragged me into Rhyme, I didn't even know what to do. I've never done Rhyme before. At the end, I sort of blanked out and I don't remember exactly what happened. But... He said that I won. You won? Yeah, I don't remember it all either. And there's no way I could have. But he said that I won. So he's been following you around so we can get some payback, huh? Has no pride, that little shit. You know, out of rhyme, if you lose, you lose. A real man can accept his defeats. And you even blacked out, didn't you? At this point, he's just playing harassing you. I guess. What? Are you worried about something? Well, when I was in rhyme, I heard someone's voice. What do you mean? Not that guy's? I think it was someone else's. It was more like his voice came from my head, rather than outside it. And then I just started to give instructions to Ren. It was like I just instinctively knew how to fight. And you haven't ever done rhyme, either. Yeah, but then why did I give instructions? I don't even know, and that's what bothers me. I hang my head down because the conversation makes me feel uncomfortable, and Kojaku lightly grabs my shoulder. Now don't think too hard about it, Alba. It's always been a bad habit of yours. Otherwise, Ren will tell you, Alba, your thoughts look like they're about to burst out of your head. <laughs> okay. Kojaku's impression of Ren gets me to smile a bit. And being just suddenly dragged into rhyme might have just confused you. Well, you can always tell me anything, Alba, just so you know. Yeah, thank you. Because Taesan always makes the best food. <laughs> because of that? <laughs> I laugh together with Kojaku, and the gloom starts to fade a little bit. You always feel relieved when you talk to someone else. That's right. I'm not the best at it, but it's not good to clam up about things like this. If you do, it becomes something like a sickness. Well, shucks, Alba. You want to go hit up those guys and draw juice? Sure. I'm worried about Mizuki, too. Ugh. What's wrong? I should be working. Hagasan is out, so I have to go watch the store. Hey, hey. Aren't you going to get in trouble? I'll go call him. I call Hagasan on my coil in a rush. Hello. You've reached Junk Shop Heibon. Hagasan, I'm so sorry, I. Oh, Albakun. I was wondering what happened since you weren't at the shop. Did something urgent come up? Well, I, um... Noi suddenly showed up to the shop and... He wouldn't understand me even if I said that anyway. Not knowing how I could possibly explain it to him, I dodged the question and apologized profusely. He sounded a little bitter about it, but he forgave me. It's okay for today, Alba. I'm here. I'm so sorry about this. I'll make sure to pay attention next time. I know you will. Well then, good work. Be safe. Uh, good work today. Huh. <sighs> Everything alright? <laughs> I guess. As much as Hagasan lets me off, I still didn't take care of my responsibilities as an adult. I'll apologize more later. <laughs>